Welcome to the Brilliant Perspectives Podcast with Graham Cook. I'm your host, Michael Becchio. For our theme of hope this month, we have an excerpt from one of Graham's teachings called Perfecting the Art of Bouncing Back. The full teaching contains several more clips, which can be found on brilliantbookhouse.com. I'll include a link to that in the description of this episode. In this particular audio, Graham talks about how we as believers learn to grow a steadfast resilience in our walk with Jesus in the midst of our struggles and failures. He elaborates on how God has a much different and hopeful perspective on our failures and defeats, and how in our journey of becoming like Him, He is inviting us to know how to turn our setbacks into comebacks. Instead of our defeats taking away from us, we can partner with His grace and learn how to use them to our gain. Enjoy. Walking with God, then, it's about handling extremes. And it's about learning to live joyfully in the tensions of life. And every single person in this room, and those, you know, listening on CD, you're not escaping either. (laughs) We've all got to develop a greater resilience that only comes from walking with God on tough days. You know, life, you know, victory is not about never knowing defeat. Victory is about knowing God in all the areas of life, good days, bad days. I remember one day being in Asia and uh, I've been going to Asia for several years, and, and uh, I, I took a new team with me, and we were in Calcutta, and it was awful. I got my butt kicked by the enemy, big time. Not a single breakthrough in any meeting. Uh, all the team was sick. Most of them wanted to go home after the second day. And uh, I lost my grace. (laughs) It was a mess. I got my butt handed to me big time. It was monumentally embarrassing. And I came home from there. And I I worked through all the stuff on the plane. I'm never going back to India again. (laughs) And all that stuff. You know, it's just embarrassment, you know, and... You deal with those things either out of your understanding of who God is or out of your own immaturity about who you're not. And, um, you know, I got my faith tested on that trip. You know, when you get your faith tested, it's not because God wants to rub your nose in it. He just wants you to know where you really are. That's it. All the things I knew, I tried What I didn't realize was that God was opening me up to a whole new level of anointing. And I'm realizing how much I have to grow to get into that level. And most of the trip was about that. And I'm sure it was for all the people who went on the team too. You know, but you should never dismiss your defeats. There's a lot you can gain from them. Sometimes we're just so embarrassed, we just like shove it out of the way. You know, let's not talk about that again. No, well, let's talk about it. Because there's so much you can learn from those situations. And of course, when you really understand how much God loves you, then he wants to have a conversation with you about what just happened. And it's like, you know, for half of the plane trip home, I'm going, not now. (laughs) Not now. Not now. And he said, son, I know you're embarrassed. You need to know that I'm not, though. I committed you to a fight that I knew you couldn't win. Because you have to see and understand how much you need to grow if you're actually going to operate at that level. Some days, that's just what it's about. You have to see where you are and where you need to go next. Yeah? But the great thing about God is he's never embarrassed or ashamed about us. (laughs) He doesn't do shame. God doesn't do shame. He's not ashamed to call his brethren. Got my butt handed to me, he's not ashamed of me. 
I'm feeling ashamed. I'm feeling like an idiot. I'm feeling like, you know, there's so many things I could have done and didn't do. She came out with a long list. And the Lord says, you know, if you pay attention to that list, you'll end up being a pessimist. (laughs) I opened up a whole new level to you. And now you need to learn how to step up into that level. You know, from what I was used to, to this place, it was a big step. And you can't take a big step in one go. You have to build a stairway. Yeah? And so I realized that over the next year, 18 months, two years, God is going to commit me to a level of training so that I can go back and take ground at that new level. You understand that principle? Everything but everything but everything but everything is about training in relationship with God. All spiritual training is relational. It's not educational. I wish Bible colleges, seminaries really understood this. That we are training people to have a brilliant relationship with God in a whole variety of circumstances. And you know what? Understanding the Greek word about something is, you know, to me, is probably one of the least important things I'll ever know. Learning how to walk with God, you know, in a a place out in uh, Asia where there are 300 million gods in the country... I need to know how to stand before God. I need to know how to be with God when the enemy is coming against me. I need to learn how to receive under pressure. I need to learn how to be consistent and mature in a whole variety of situations that I'm going to find myself in. All spiritual training is relational. It's all about learning how to relate to God and how to relate to people around you. It's about learning how to relate to people who are in the household of faith and how to relate to people who are outside the household of faith. It's about learning how to bless your enemies and people who are committed to your destruction, but God wants you committed to blessing them. You get opportunities in the most weird places. And the only thing that makes you actually understand what God is doing is your own consistency in terms of the nature of God for you. The goal of God is to make us in his image. It seems to me in our world we're trying to make God in ours. God doesn't want to be like you. He's pretty clear on that. He doesn't want to be an evangelical. He doesn't want to be a charismatic. He doesn't want to be a Catholic or anything else. He just likes being who he is. He likes it so much, he wants you to be like him. He is absolutely not evangelical, not charismatic, and he's definitely not conservative. He's not any of those things. He has no plans to be in any of those things. And he doesn't endorse any of those things. He is who he is. And he's making us like him. So get over yourself, saith the Lord. (laughs) Come, we have a ways to go. Because if we were winning right now, our society would be proving it. But it's not because we're not. We are not winning in America. We're not winning yet. 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 We have to do some growing up before we can win in this country. The world is growing up outside of Christ. And the church is not growing up fast enough in Christ to compete with what's going on in the world right now. We have some growing up to do. We've got to develop some resilience. 
Resilience is the ability to withstand the shock of the unexpected. It's the ability to recover quickly and reposition yourself. To learn how to turn a setback into a comeback. Many years ago, I think about 30 years ago, living in England, I was going through some areas of just personal defeat in my own life, just habits that were on top of me rather than the other way around. Um, You know, and living in this place of um, always asking for forgiveness but not overcoming. You know, and the Lord actually prefers you to overcome rather than keep asking for forgiveness. He'll grant forgiveness, but it's not his first choice. His first choice is that you overcome, is that you rise above, yeah? So I'm in this place, and I'm just, when I'm always up against it, my methodology always has been to fast. I'm one of those guys, it's like, I'm either going to fast until I'm dead, or until you do something. I'm one of those guys. When I get backed into a corner, I'm like laying everything down. I'm just like drinking water until I'm dead or you do something. You know, because, well, that's just what I am. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm just saying that's my thing. (laughs) I remember one day, um, I've been fasting for 16 days. And uh, really thinking, this is the Lord, I'm fasting, and I'm really going to go after something. And after the 16th day, I felt the Lord come into the room, and he said to me, so uh, how's the diet going? (laughs) It's like, I don't say that. (laughs) You're on one of these shock diets, son. Don't say that. I'm fasting. I don't recall telling you to fast. Well, okay, it's my idea, but you could bless it. (laughs) And he said, how about I bless you after you eat something? I believe Graham's revelation here offers us such a hopeful point of view on the apparent failures and setbacks in our lives. (laughs) I love that he said, victory is not about never knowing defeat. Beloved, it is our perspective and our defeats that leads us to discouragement, which then, of course, leads to our hope being deferred or hope being robbed from our hearts. We must know how to clothe ourselves with hope in our defeats because our Heavenly Father does not see those things as we tend to see them. Remember that failure as we see it is not really failure to Him. We're learning, as the Word says, to put on Christ, to become like Him in all things, And learning by nature involves mistakes and failures. That is totally normal. It is in these that the Father wants us to encounter his heart and grow in us a resilience to arise with boldness in his grace and confidence in who he is for us. You know, the enemy wants us to encounter our own incapacity to overcome. But Father wants us to encounter his already overcoming nature towards us in all things. We already have the final triumph in Jesus. So when failures do happen, as Graham says, learn to steward it relationally, processing it with your tender father and not dismissing or missing the gold that is ready to be found in it. Rest yourself in hope, knowing that father is so committed to you becoming like Jesus that he is set on creating a pattern of comebacks from any failures in your life. This is so that you develop a heart so steadfast and sturdy in him that no adversity, no failure, and no setback can take you down. Be encouraged, beloved, as Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 promises you, the Lord himself is the one who is going ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not desert you or abandon you. So do not fear and do not be dismayed. Hey, have an amazing week in the Father and in Jesus and in the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening and be blessed.